Before leaving the sample edit window, I want to have the MPC touch, calculate the tempo of the sample, and then apply it to the sequence that I'm going to record into. So I like the tempo of the sample right from the turntable. I don't want to tune it up or tune it down. I just want to know what that tempo is and then apply that tempo to the sequence for this. To make that happen, I'm going to touch from BPM. And the dialog window comes up and is now asking me how many beats are in the sample so that it can figure out the tempo. So let me be clear that it's asking for beats, not bars. Make sure you're counting beats. I'm going to close this window out and then I'm going to play the sample and count the beats in the sample. And it is in 4-4 four, four time. So if you already know it's four bars, you can kind of do the math and figure out how many beats. But I'm going to count them anyway. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So it's 16 beats. So I'm going to go back to from BPM. I'm going to double tap here and I'm going to type in 16 beats. So based on that information, it calculated the tempo of the sample at 119.1 beats per minute. I'm going to touch two sequence to send it to the sequence. Now I'm going to go back to the main window and here you can see that the tempo has been set to 119.08 beats per minute. So if I record this sample in, it should sync perfectly to the tempo. I'm going to actually change the length of the sequence from two bars to four. I'm going to touch here and then use the data dial to scroll over to four bars because it's a four bar sample. And as I mentioned earlier, sequences are made up of tracks. So I have an unused track, which is track one. I have 128 tracks available to me. I have 128 sequences and I have 128 programs available to me that I can use in the MPC software. So on the first track that's unused, I'm going to record in the touch piano sample in a four bar loop. So I'm going to activate record. And when I touch play start, I'm going to get a one bar count in. After I stopped recording, the click was still playing, so I touched here and turned this off to stop the click from playing. So that looped in perfectly, a perfect four bars, because the tempo of the sample matched the tempo of the sequence. I didn't have to do any further adjustments. And now I'm ready to add in new programs on different tracks. But before I move on, I want to be very organized. So I'm going to name the track and name the program so that they make sense. First, I'll name the program. Here on the screen, you can see the name of the program is Program 001. I'm going to touch this A, and that's going to allow me to type in the name of the program. I'm going to go ahead and name it the same thing that I named the sample, because it's the only sample in the program and will probably be the only sample in there. So I'm going to name it Touch Piano. Uh, I don't mind the capital A. And I'm going to go ahead and name the track. I'm going to name the track just piano. So I know what's on this track. Now this type of organization, the naming of tracks is going to help you when you want to arrange a song or when you want to export stems to take into your DAW for mixing or adding other sounds. Cool. So now I want to create a new program. And I want to create this program using files that I already have on my hard drive. So I'm going to go to the next track. Oops, I went too many. This button down here allows me to hit the minus button and go backwards in tracks or hit the plus button and go forward in tracks. I can also double touch on the name of the track and then select whatever track I want here or just leave it selected and use the data dial to pick the track I want. So I'm on track two and I need to bring in some samples. So I'm going to go into my browser by holding down shift and hitting menu. Now I'm in my browser. And I have a folder on my desktop that has some drum samples in that I want to bring in to create a program. So I'm going to double touch here at the top of my browser. And from this menu that pops up, I'm going to select my desktop. And on my desktop, I have a folder called touch BWF. I'm going to double touch that to open it. 
And inside this folder, I have several different drum samples that I'm going to use to create a new program. Now, the reason those samples are playing as I touch them or scroll through them is because I have Audition set to Auto. So anytime I touch a sample, it will play it. I want to load all of these samples into the MPC Touches sample pool. And then I can choose to put them in a new program or I can assign them to a program that I've already created. When using the browser, you should be very aware of your filters up here at the top. Notice that my filter is set to all, so it's showing me anything that's inside this folder. But if I change the filter to project, you don't see anything because there are no projects inside this folder. If I'm looking for sequences, I could touch sequence, but there are no sequences in this folder, so you don't see anything. If I hit program, there are no programs either. Nothing shows up. If I hit samples, you will see all of the samples that are in the folder. And if I touch all, you will see everything, sequences, projects, samples, etc. So how can I load these into my sample pool? There are several ways. I can double touch. I can select the next sample and then touch load. I can scroll to the next one and then push the data dial. Or if I know I want to import multiple samples or all of the samples from this folder to use in a program, I can go to the software, select the sample at the top, hold shift, and then select the sample at the bottom. And then I can drag those samples together over here to my sample pool. Now, what if I didn't want to select one of the samples that were in my selection, like I don't want Snare 2? I can hold Command and then click Snare 2, and it's not selected. And of course, I can hold down Command and deselect other items, but I can also hold down Command and add items to the selection. So now I want to add those samples that I imported to a program, but I'm going to need to create a new program first. Here in the browser, if I touch the sample tab at the bottom, I'll see all of the samples that I imported in my sample pool. But the program that it's allowing me to add samples to pads for is the Touch Piano program, which I created earlier and spelled incorrectly. <laughs> I need to create a new program. So I'm going to go to the main window. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to name this program correctly so that it makes sense. Touch ends with an H. And now I want to create a new program. To create a new program, you touch this plus button right here. And I'm going to go ahead and name this program before I even put sounds in it. And I'm going to name this program Drum Kit. I did a much better job of spelling that. So now I am going to go back to my browser. Hold down shift and hit menu. And I'm going to assign those sounds to my drum kit program. I'm going to turn the auto audition off. So I'm going to start with my kicks. The first pad is selected and I've selected kick one, which is assigning it to pad one in bank A. So I'm going to touch the second pad, scroll to kick two, and now it's assigned to pad two. Kick five, kick seven, kick eight, kick A. Oops, kick A, touch this one, kick BWF. And now I'm on to my snares. I'm going to sign my first snare here. Snare, snare, snare. I think that's the last snare. And then I'm going to go here and put my hi-hats in and the last hi-hat here. So now in my drum kit program, I've assigned those imported sounds into bank A. So I'm going to go back to my main window and I'm going to record in a kick and a snare pattern. But before I do that, I'm going to name this track. I'm going to name it kick snare. 